Bienvenido a Espacio a Tierra, soy Ana Cristina Olvera y te invito a bordo de la Estación Espacial. Hoy vamos a ir dentro del Laboratorio de Sistemas de Alimentos Espaciales del Centro Espacial Johnson. La comida es parte de nuestra vida cotidiana y juega un papel importante en la temporada navideña. En los Estados Unidos se celebra la Fiesta de Acción de Gracias, que es un momento para que amigos y familiares se reúnan alrededor de la mesa para cenar y compartir una fiesta. Pero, ¿cómo se lleva a cabo una comida de acción de gracias o cualquier comida en el espacio? Para guiarnos en la preparación de una comida en la Estación Espacial Internacional, nos acompaña Sulei Wu, gerente de sistemas alimentarios de la Estación Espacial. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shulei. We do have the Thanksgiving holiday coming up, and I know you guys have to prepare a little in advance, and there's no grocery store in space, so can you tell me a little bit about the menu and how it gets there to the International Space Station? Yeah, exactly. As you mentioned, there's no grocery store in space and there is no kitchen appliances for crew member to cook up a meal from scratch in microgravity. Therefore, here in Food Lab, we have to procure, process and package all the food in advance to send to our crew members. Here with me, I have a few selection of food packages uh, like this one. This one is a smoked turkey. This is an irradiated product that is a technology uh, utilizing the gamma radiation to make the food shelf stable. The red dots here indicating it received the sufficient amount of dosage to make the product safe to eat. Another example here, this one is Candy the Yam. Uh -huh. This product you can see it's made in 2021 yes. and will definitely still be good as well. Um, this is a thermal stabilized package. It's basically just like the canned foods you can find in grocery store, um, canned tuna, etc. But we pack them in those flexible pouch so that they're lighter in weight. And also when crew member finish eating, they can come past the trash very easily. And another one here, this one is spicy green beans. They're in those white package. Uh, so those products are freeze dried literally here. So as you can see, spicy green beans are dry like a mummy. Free drying the process, <laughs> remove all the water out. You may be surprised, all the food we eat on a daily basis, most of them are between 80 to 90% of water. That's what makes them spoil so quick. If we take all the water out, then they become very shelf stable. And do you guys take any special requests for these holiday meals? Yeah, that's actually very important um, because whatever food we send up, we want to make sure crew member will be liking the food. If they don't like the food, then we just waste up the payload going up. So I will reach out to crew member to see what they would like to have. Like this year specifically, crew member would like to have a charcuterie board. Ah, Therefore, okay. we work with a cargo integration team, manage to uh, stow up some cheese, real cheese with refrigeration and some dried meats that passed micro testing and some fruits and dried nuts. So those are gonna be up there for oh, this that's... holiday. So how much food does an astronaut need to eat while on station trying to maintain muscle mass and bone density and nutritional values to help keep them there? Yeah, so uh, for the crew member to maintain a healthy weight, they do lots of exercise. Uh, more exercise means more calorie. Therefore, their calorie requirement is higher than the requirement on ground. Um, so normally, on average, uh, for a female astronaut, probably about 2,700 calorie per day. For male, somewhere about 3,300 calorie per day. Okay. Of course, that depends on the gender, their height, and their weight. And it's, it's specific or uh, you know, tailored per astronaut. Probably. That's correct. Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, but most of them normally structure their meal um, into breakfast, lunch, dinner with a snack in between. How about cravings? Are, are, are there a wide enough variety in menu options for astronauts if they do have cravings while up there for however long duration? Yeah, variety is a buzzword. Variety is a key. Because even if you like smoked turkey, you love smoked turkey, but eat this every day for one week, you're gonna hate it next <laughs> week. So we try to supply a big variety, as big as possible. Uh, we, on the standard menu, we supply 200 different food and beverage items for crew members to pick and choose. But 200 may sound a lot to you, but <laughs> imagine uh, this 
our target consumer astronauts, they all have different backgrounds and they're very diverse in terms of personal preference. So after you take out things they don't like, for right. each crew member that shrink significantly. So we supplement with crew preference containers. Each crew member for six months stay up there, they get nine containers of those preference food. So those can be food uh, either from our standard menu, um, because if you really like smoked turkey and your crewmates also love smoked turkey, you better pack some of your own. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Become the standard menu, first come, first serve. And they can also request lots of the commercial of the shelf items. As long as we evaluate and consider they're safe for flight, we will pack those for crew member to add a variety as well. Awesome. Oh, and the third key thing is exchange. Crew member, they do uh, share food on ISS with like the Russian crew members. And when you're sharing, you add more variety. The aroma of food, how does that work in space? Yeah, so there are several foods to that. First of all, if you really like coffee, mm -hmm. I love the coffee smell. <laughs> but this is gonna be the coffee package crew member gonna get. And once they add water back, they use a straw to drink the coffee. So they're not gonna be able to smell their coffee. Okay, so that's, now what about these? Yeah, for food, so the aroma molecules um, on Earth, normally they're lighter than air. That's why they go up and go straight to your nasal pathway. For crew member, one thing they don't smell very well. And also the second thing, the aroma molecule in the microgravity, they go everywhere. So I know on station, uh, condiments are a thing and crew members tend to like the, the spicier condiments. Is that is that true? Is that right? Uh, that tend to be true for many crew members um, because when you're in microgravity environment, your body fluid shift make you don't you have kind of stuffy nose. You don't smell things very well. So crew member tend to like the spicy kick in the food that help them open up the nasal pathway and also help them taste the food better. That makes sense. Part of tasting is smells. Now, what's in the future for the space food system? What are we looking forward to for Moon to Mars missions, for Artemis missions going forward? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, for the future, we do envision the space food system gonna be a combination of several technologies. The first one, those we consider as a pre-packaged food system because crew member, all they need to do is just add water or just heat up and open to eat. Those are ready to eat food. We still consider this as part of the future space food system because those doesn't require much time from crew members. And also if there are any issues to other system, they will have this one to lay back on, to fall back on. Uh, the second portion we're thinking about is like the crop for crew member to plant crops, veggies in space. And there have been some testing going on that crew member harvest chili in space and make a chili taco. I do recall that. And I do recall them eating and testing out the, the food that they were growing. I know so far they've looked at some leafy greens, some radishes. And like you said, the, the chilies were very um, big on station. So can you tell us any new items that you guys are looking into or of recent years? Are there any crew favorites that have recently flown to the International Space Station? Yeah, I think one great example for that is a mango salad. That's a product developed by our advanced food technology scientists. They develop this product, they do the shelf life evaluation like three years, making sure the food is all good. Then we add it to the standard menu. And since then we have heard just positive, very positive comments from crew members. That's different, uh, mango salad. Yes, it's actually pretty good. It's a freeze dry product, but yeah, very fresh. Shulei Wu from the International Space Station Food Laboratory. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Este es el espacio tierra de esta ocasión. Para más información en español sobre la estación espacial y otras historias, síguenos en la web en ciencia.nasa.gov.